the Star Wars train is moving full speed ahead of its May 27th release of Disney Plus under the Obi-Wan Kenobi miniseries. In today's video, we'll see Lucasfilm boss Kathleen Kennedy explain the delays in Ryan Johnson's trilogy, which is still in development. But not to worry, because there are still a few other projects on the way. First up, why the delay in the trilogy? Star Wars boss Kathleen Kennedy has given the Star Wars fans a disappointing update on Ryan Johnson's planned trilogy, admitting that things are on the back burner. Ryan Johnson, who directed the 2017's The Last Jedi, was confirmed to be overlooking a new trilogy way back when his movie was released, although not much progress appeared to have happened since then. Johnson previously made major waves in the Star Wars fan base with the release of Star Wars Episode VIII The Last Jedi. While it was seemingly controversial as an installment in the iconic franchise, the film was hugely successful, resulting in Lucasfilm's granting Johnson control over an entire upcoming trilogy. However, there has been no official update about the project since its announcement. Recently, Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy provided an update on the trilogy, confirming that it's still under development, and hinting that it will be some time before it sees any real progress. Kennedy told Vanity Fair that Ryan has been unbelievably busy with Knives Out and with the other deals that he made at Netflix for multiple movies. She further revealed that the movies were less of a priority at this moment. Such a letdown. Next, we have other upcoming Star Wars projects. The Star Wars producer also hinted at the approach the studio is currently taking toward future projects, stating that she hesitates using the word trilogy because the Star Wars franchise is much more about persistent storytelling. Whether this can be taken as an indication of any changes in Johnson's upcoming project is currently unknown. This news comes after author Soraya Wilson confirmed last year that the Johnson Star Wars trilogy was still on, but still no dates or timelines have been confirmed because he has other projects going on. A year before that, the director himself said he was still taking on Lucasfilm, but they haven't announced anything on their slate as of yet. In 2019, he put down reports suggesting the films had been axed. Kennedy also updated on the status of the others planned Star Wars movies, admitting that they have a roadmap they are following. The profile confirms that Taika Waititi's movie is likely to be next, with Rogue Squadron from Patty Jenkins further off. As for Marvel boss Kevin Feige's Star Wars movie, Wilson added that she would love to see what movie he might come up with. But as of right now, there wasn't anything specific. The producer also revealed that the current slate of TV shows was influencing the movies. They definitely know the fans are still hungry for more content. And now for how the cast and producers respond to criticism. In recent years, Star Wars has been more focused on television series for the Disney Plus streaming service. Following the conclusion of the Skywalker saga, John Johnson's The Last Jedi was released in 2017 and sparked fierce debate among the fanbase due to a variety of scenes, controversial plot points, and characters featured throughout the film. Fans argue about the film's tone, the Canto bite scene, the depiction of Luke Skywalker, and the decision to kill off Captain Phasma and Snoke, among other things. For these reasons, the film has earned both vocal support and criticism from fans, as well as Johnson's peers. Star Daisy Ridley, who plays the protagonist, Rey, in the franchise, had some words of wisdom for the critics. She previously commented on the divided response from fans, stating that everyone on the internet was going to have an opinion now anyway, but it's fair. If people hold something incredibly dear and they think they know how it should be and it doesn't turn out that way, it's only fair for people to think that they were done wrong. It doesn't mean they were necessarily done wrong, but for the sake of freedom of expression, sure, why not? Ultimately, Johnson is a filmmaker and one person can't dictate how a film is supposed to turn out. The follow-up film, The Rise of Skywalker, seemingly frustrated certain fans even further with the decision to bring Emperor Palpatine back from the dead and marginalize characters, especially Finn. Director J.J. Abrams previously stated that they had to plan things as best as they could, and they always need to be able to respond to the unexpected. The unexpected can come in all forms, but according to Abrams, there's nothing more important than knowing where you're going, and we can always count on him to deliver the best. Time for some other related news. Starting with an update on the new Star Wars movie. It seems like Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness writer Michael Waldron is hard at work on his upcoming Star Wars movie, also known for masterminding Disney
Disney Plus series Loki, and a couple of Rick and Morty episodes, Waldron was chosen last year by Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige to be the project's lead creative after joining forces with Lucasfilm. Michael Waldron told Variety this month that they're finally into it in earnest and that he's having fun writing away. He also added that he's enjoying having the freedom to do something that's not necessarily a sequel, as it just doesn't have a bunch of TV shows and movies that are being serviced on top of it, the way they did with Doctor Strange. So for him, it feels like a different exercise and is quite nice. Having been a Marvel man previously, Waldron was asked which lessons from the powerhouse studio he'd be bringing over to a galaxy far, far away. In his opinion, the success of the MCU was due to all the amazing science fiction and concepts, and ultimately the success was built upon the characters, their humility, their very relatable conflicts, friendships, and the family that is the MCU. Plus, Star Wars, at its best, is a story about family. Han Solo, Luke Skywalker, and Princess Leia were a family the viewers loved seeing together, and hated it when they were split apart. So that's definitely the biggest dynamic he could bank on. They're great characters. There's nothing new. I'm not going to blow anybody's mind with that headline, but that's my biggest takeaway. The fans can't wait to see what he comes up with. And now, The Mandalorian was the most successful among Star Wars shows. The Mandalorian received an explosive reaction from the audience upon its release. It gave streaming rights to Disney Plus and had many people investing in the streaming service just because of that show. Viewership for The Mandalorian set in the top 20 most watched TV shows of 2020 according to streaming data, and it's easy to see why. Setting itself as one of 2022's biggest return TV shows, The Mandalorian left season two with pressing questions on where the show could go, and we can hardly wait. The Mandalorian rightfully set that bar for Disney's Star Wars TV shows by effectively exploring other aspects of a franchise that was already bursting with material. By wisely introducing the main character with an orphaned alien child, the show provides the audience a great reason to be invested in its otherwise closed off lead. There's a fine balance of well-paced action and gripping lore, along with opportunities to present familiar characters like Ahsoka Tano and Boba Fett. Naturally, The Mandalorian was destined to be the ultimate launching point for many other Star Wars Disney Plus TV shows, and the show's execution has raised the standards for everyone else. Finally, Star Wars is releasing a deluxe version of Obi-Wan Kenobi's lightsaber for the Disney Plus show. Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi wields a new and improved version of his iconic lightsaber in his new Disney Plus show. And now, so can you. Toy giant Hasbro has unveiled a Black Series replica of the weapon featured in Obi-Wan Kenobi. Though this version luckily won't actually slice through anything, or anyone for that matter, now available on pre-order, the Hasbro Star Wars The Black Series Obi-Wan Kenobi Force FX Elite lightsaber is truly a deluxe version, as the real blue lightsaber from the series has been used for modeling here. Hasbro has loaded up the Obi-Wan Kenobi Force FX Elite lightsaber lightsaber with loads of special features, including real sounds from the show and light-up capability with LED. How cool is that? The hilt is adjustable, and the blue blade itself is also removable. This replica can either be used in cosplaying or for display, with a stand that comes included in the package. This FX Elite lightsaber is the latest in a series of replicas being released. Last week, the Black Series version of the Dark Saber from The Mandalorian and The Book of Boba Fett also went on sale. It would certainly make for a worthy opponent for Obi-Wan's blade, don't you think? If you're really ready to splash out on some Star Wars cosplay kit, a full body suit of Stormtrooper armor has also been put on sale. However, there's a limited supply of those, so time's ticking away if you want to get one. And that's a wrap for this video. So what are your thoughts on the delay in Ryan Johnson's trilogy? Are you excited about the new Star Wars miniseries on Disney Plus? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.